Now let's go and animate uh, the soccer ball bouncing. So we go back to our rig that we had before. And the first thing we do is open the global animation options and set the end to 120 just so we have a smaller time frame to work with. We're then going to let's dolly out and use the pose tool to select the soccer ball control, move it back about 15 units. And then you'll press K to keyframe that. Move to one front time to 120. Uh, move to positive 15 and set another keyframe. And now we we're animating between those two those two times. Now we can zoom in and just take a closer look at this. Um, and what we want to do is go to frame 12 and set another keyframe. Go to frame 36. Set another keyframe and go to frame 60 and set another keyframe. Now we're going to go back and lift the first one up. We don't need to set another keyframe because there already was one there, so updating the values will, will update the keyframe. Uh, at frame 24, let's lift it up and press K. Let's go to frame 48, lift up a little bit less and press K. So we got a bigger bounce to a smaller bounce. Now, if we turn on real time and we play this back, uh, we of course get the inevitable floating ball instead of the bouncing ball. And that of course has to do with the, the shape of your animation curve. So go translate Y, press H to see all, and let's break those animation curves. Now when we drag on the one side, because everything's selected, we're going to modify them all, which is fine. Uh, now we need to deselect and then we'll modify the other sides of these two. So now we have sharp edges where the ball hits the ground in from translate Y point of view. And let's play that back. And you know, it's not perfect yet, but it's it's definitely sharper than it was um, before. So the animation curve is in that second tab. You can also break that off and have it on a second monitor if you want. You can also turn on a motion path handle. This is unique to the pose tool. That's why we're using it instead of the handle tool or the transform tool. Uh, and it gives us this motion path that shows us where all our keyframes are. Uh, and what the interpolation is um, after that. We can also turn on, if we select the soccer ball animation itself, full deformation, and actually just see um, see sort of some onion skinning on that. Now, if we want to change the parameter or the look of that, we can press D to bring up display options. And if we click on the... Um, scene tab I think it is uh, yeah scene tab there's some onion skinning options here so you can uh, let's put a, a pale bluish color um, before and a reddish color after and this will basically allow us to see um, and then oh and change the increments let's say to every three frames so given that um, you'll be able to see the onion skinning before and after and get a sense of, of what the motion is looking like if, if that's a, a way that you're able to read animation uh, and gives you a sense of what's going on. Now if we select the control here you know we sort of just block this out if we find okay we'd like to go a little faster with the bouncing we can press shift and select all those keyframes and then with the middle mouse button, we can drag that back down, maybe drag it down to 36. So that'll tighten up the animation at the beginning, um, and that's setting all the keyframes, that's selecting and moving all the keyframes. And now we get a sort of faster motion uh, at the beginning there. Now we can select these handles and move them around to so begin to modify the, the motion in 3D space. Uh, so we're, we're repositioning the keyframes basically by moving those points around. If we just deselect the object, we won't uh, see that handle anymore. And, and if we want to, we can turn off the onion skinning uh, on the soccer ball anim. Um, if we want this handle to be permanent, even when I deselect, uh, we can go persistent, and then I can select other things, and it won't interfere. The, the handle will still be there. Now. I want to go and look at Translate X. It got a little wonked out uh, over there, so we're going to go and delete those channels. And we're going to just do a nice arc from beginning to end, so faster at the beginning and slowing down near the end. And um, 
This will change a little bit about how you might want to, to interact with those space handles, but um, in terms of getting the motion that we need, a nice cleaner motion, uh, it works very well to do that. So once we have that, it's time to, to in insert the um, squash control into the picture. Because it was a separate node, we weren't keyframing that at all yet, so we can start that sort of fresh. So we want to go one frame before a bounce, stretch that up a bit, and press K. Move right to the frame of the bounce and squash it and press K. And the first bounce should be squashed a little more, and then the second one a little bit less, and the third one less. Um, because of the power, the height that it's coming from. So we have three keyframes that, that create that sort of bounce on the ground. And then we can go to the peaks, and we can have some stretch. Really just this guy um, stretches out when it gets to the top. Press K. Uh, again, stretch out here. Press K. Um, once there, a little bit less, but not squashed yet. Down here, we squash it. K and then uh, well, one more there, I don't know, 23, and squash that up, or push that up, and then we get a little bit more subtle bounce there. Um, at the top there, we can go up again, and then just before this, we'll go down a little bit, and at this point, it's starting to get ready to be uh, perfect, but it's squash a little bit. And then we can have a little overcompensation there, and then maybe a couple frames later, come back to actual zero with no uh, deformation in that direction at all. So there's a little um, follow through, a little tiny so follow through in terms of the animation there. So now we go like this, and there we go. So here we've been able to take certain principles, animation principles, like squash and stretch, uh, and apply them here into this bouncing ball. Now, we want to add another feature in here where we right-click and add a motion effects on top of the animation curve. And so we basically, it's like layering noise on top of an existing animation. Now we can do the amplitude at like 5, and of course it's super exaggerated and not really what we're looking for. Um, let's go for something more like one. So you can still see the shapes, but uh, you know it looks like it's bouncing up and down on the ground. Now we don't want it to ever go under the ground, so uh, we can add more motion effects and layer them on. We just go back to here and we go right click and we go limit. And the limit we want to do here is we want to say never go below the ground, zero, and it doesn't matter what's up at the top, we can go, go to six. We're not going to limit anything on that side. But now, it, when it hits a flat part, it'll just go flat uh, when, it, when it was trying to go under the ground. Now, it doesn't really make sense for us to be um, putting noise on the bouncing part of this. So we can click the noise node in this little chain that we have here in the motion effects. And what we can do is go to the point where we want the noise to start and Alt-click to keyframe that. Then we're going to go back to f zero, where we don't really want any um, noise, and we're going to alt-click to get that. And now it'll slowly fade in the way it is right now, but one option is to go the animation curve and make that a hard switch. If we make that a hard switch, you'll have no noise for the, the two the bounces, and then it, it will kick in for that final little area there at the end, where it's hitting the ground and maybe going over some pebbles or something. So that's how you can apply motion effects on top of animation you've already done uh, to create a procedural sort of uh, next layer uh, to your solution. Now once we have that ready, we maybe we don't want that path anymore, so we'll just go in and um, turn off the persistence of it. And now we can turn on a flip book um, down here in this icon, press OK, and then it'll go through, calculate each and every one of the frames until it gets to 120. And once it's hit 120, uh, then we can bring that over and, and review the results. And of course, these results will be played back in real time, and we can scrub through them and get a, a real sense of what, what the motion's doing.